Hello there, it's another edition of Foodie Friday on the Alive and Social Network. My name is Brian Turner, you can call me BT, there's my daughter Lydia Turner right there. You can call me Lydia Turner. You can call her Lydia Turner, sometimes known as LT, and together nope. we're a BLT, sometimes, occasionally. <laughs> you know, that's her mother's nickname too, but I'm just saying occasionally, sometimes, oh. occasionally. We'll dabble. Give them the old tagline, Lynn, come on, it's Foodie Friday. Coming in hot, always fresh, and never stale. Never stale. Food dude of the highest order, Ross Swayback's joining us here in the Alive and Social Studio. Peace out, Hello. brother. Deuces. Good to have Hello, you. Deuces, exactly. Deuces, exactly. double deuces. Oh. And Tony Tam is here. She's got the Cookies by Design shop in Plymouth right off 169 on 55. Well, just kind of off 55, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's... Just off 55. Just off 55. We'd love to have food entrepreneurs join us. You're an entrepreneur, Ross. You're an entrepreneur. Can we talk however we want to talk? Uh, well, Are we allowed to... <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll let you know this. Okay. There's an explicit content uh, thing that we can check, check off here, a checkbox. And so if you want to, if, if an, yes. if, if if an occasional... Happens, if I am occasion- Rihanna adjacent, so I will talk about however I want <laughs> If to. an occasional whatever, a something, something right. comes out of your <clears throat> mouth while we're in the midst of this uh, Foodie Friday narrative, right. that's that's the that way works. it is. We've given warning to our fair listeners. I get Shit edited happens. enough. Shh, right. See, there you go. We've already bitch, checked it off. Bring it, bitch. Already checked it off. <laughs> that was a mic drop. <laughs> double deuces, double deuces. That's what we got going on. You know, it does Deuces happen. up, eight town down. Eight town eight down. down. <laughs> I don't know that one. Huh? You have to be from Hotlanta. Oh, okay. Deuces up. Eight town down, eight. Atlanta. Hey, okay. Got, it looks like an A without the cross member. A downtown, mm. upside oh. down peace sign. A downtown. A downtown. I came to learn. A-town. I came to learn. <laughs> I think she just. I think You're she good. Just made that up. She's nervous. I can she see it. She's up. got that look in her eyes. Are you from Minnesota, Tony? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. well, you know, this is going to be a trip for her. Minnesota by way of right. uh, Moorhead. Yeah. You okay. Bet. Yeah. Because Moorhead's a different world. I'm a Moorhead spud. She, Are you? Yes, I am. Do you like Moorhead? Here we go. Oh yes, I've never heard that one I before. Do. No, but... ne- never. No, in Moorhead, <laughs> Minnesota, that joke has never been told before. Ever. There's a lot of Spartans and Eagles and all other kinds of teams. There's only one Minnesota Spuds. One Spud. One yep. Spud. Can we call you Spud? I had no idea. We can't, can't call, call you Spud. Tammy, but... Can't call me Tammy. You can call no. me Spud. No. Her name is Tony. <laughs> T-O-N-I. Tony. Yes. And his name is Ross. R-O-S-S. Right. Good job. Yeah. I know. I I'm just po- checking with I you. I always put post-its in front of me or write it down <laughs> on, a, on a piece of manila paper. Do you have arrows pointing to who's who? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just yeah. checking. Yeah. I, I just I, need to know. Even though you're my daughter, I've got an arrow with Lydia <laughs> pointing to you. <laughs> hey, listen. Nobody's a fool. I'm, well, I'm a... <laughs> well, 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 whatever the case may be. You we'll know, just, we like... We, we like we, we like we like to break the ice occasionally with what we like to call the Foodie Friday Five. Oh, I think we've frankly, I think we've broken said ice already. But what ice? It's we'll, hot as hell we'll, out. We'll, we'll dive right into it. Yeah, already uh, the S word, the H word. I'm just you know, and the other H word with chat an M word in front of it. Good job, by the way. Yeah, that, oh. that's always fish. Good. <laughs> fish. <laughs> the uh, the muscle relaxants are kicking in for mm. us way back. Uh, Tony Tam is here. She's uh, brought us uh, platters of cookies. Oh, my God. I know. Like, how platters. did you... I'm sorry. How many cookies do you think are in this room right now? I'm going to count them. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, and there. I can't count that. Ross, did you get right. a cookie yet, by the way? I didn't. I Stand up. Stand I want to, waiting to try to have a cookie. A cookie. Because he wants You've to made go cookies about. for Oprah, I damn it. Have. Stand cookies up and get Oprah. a cookie. You can take your headphones off if you your need to. Your sugar cookies? Get a cookie. Those are in there, too. Get a cookie's way back. What's Oprah's favorite cookie? Is it a snickerdoodle? Oh, I don't know. What did, what you, did you make for What did you make for Sugar it? cookies. Oh. Yeah. I made cookies like this. Oh, sure you did. Um, but they were <laughs> in a different shape. So these are adorable. I mean, I made cookies way. exactly Listen, like this. You guys, looked... Have you guys made these kinds of cookies before? Mm-hmm. Seriously? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have. Mm-hmm. So you know the time that goes into these. Absolutely. Do you take muscle relaxers? <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I don't do know. when I'm making them. I don't know if those lines would be as tight if you took muscle relaxers. Oh, they totally will. When you take, <laughs> when you get on them, then you dial you learn, in. Right, you're totally focused so at this point. I, I'd love to take the credit. But, I don't do the decorating at my shop. It's shaped like a mustard bottle, and it's yellow frosting. We'll post with, pictures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, tasty sugar cookie. It's good. Let mm-hmm. it rest on your palate mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. bit. Don't just it's go. It's good. With- your your um your cookie's thick. You know, I did just say that. (laughs) I like a thick cookie. (laughs) Of course you do. Don't we all? Um, It's got good vanilla flavor. 
It really does. It's not dry. You know how sometimes these get really dry? Yes. We were just talking about that. Damn it, Swayback, ever <clears throat> since your Moorhead joke, I'm finding subtext in everything you <laughs> say <laughs> now. Yeah, sometimes you have to lubricate it if it's really <laughs> See, dry. Here we go! <laughs> Um, but what dry. I'm most impressed with is your um, your royal icing, which I'm assuming is royal icing. We don't use royal icing. icing. That's or, funny you should say that. Okay. Whatever it is that you're using here is, um, it's really, if you're not using royal icing, that's really impressive because I'm looking over here at these other cookies and going, that's some detail? Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, so, Lydia and I were just talking we about were, that. We were just talking you know, about royal yeah. icing. I'm not a big, I just did cookies on the show Two weeks ago. On the Fox 9 morning show? Yep. And um, show. I was using royal icing. But see, again, it's that whole kind of recipe. Like, I, well, I've created my own. But, um, you know, a lot of times it's gross. It is gross. And they put lemon in it, which I don't understand the lemon thing. I don't want lemon with my sugar cookie. Right. But you've done a really, really good job here. So, um, well, thanks. And if you're not decorating, that's... That's why you're not on muscle relaxers, because that's where you need them. <laughs> She's got a shop to run. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really impressive. They're beautiful cookies, seriously. They're Thank really, really much. beautiful. We, we were just talking about the distinction between the royal icing and what you guys use. What can, can you well, draw that it's interesting. We don't use a lot of things. We make a lot of things. Excellent. And that's what makes well, our product different. Um, that's kind of what I meant, but... Well, right. Well, a lot of people, um, when they do stop in the shop or when they see it, and you say, oh, would you like to try one? Their response is, oh, no, thanks. I've had those. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, well, maybe you should try these. Because they expect royal icing, yeah. and they expect to walk away with that. That cloying feeling in there. That, that, the film, that, that film on the top of their yeah. mouth. And that, um, well, the royal and icing, that tingle. And royal that, icing makes it so sweet. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the, mm-hmm. the secret is out there. Our, our fabulous <clears throat> when, uh, baker, Wendy, makes our icing. It's mostly a powdered sugar base. I won't give it away because it's made it's a in giant 50-pound. <laughs> Plus, you said um, it's a secret. And oh, it's so a the, secret, the yes. recipe isn't out there. No, but it's mostly powdered sugar-based. Uh, Would you be willing to share it with me if I use it personally? <laughs> yeah. It's got um, the caro syrup gives it the viscosity mm-hmm. to allow it to be supple enough to... Do the detail that supple. we do. I love something supple. You bet. And, and already two details have leaked out. You watch it, Tony I'm, Tam. Uh, you know, I'm coming at you with another one. Oh, um, no. And then the Crisco uh, mm. that we use yep. allows us when we make, we also color all our own icing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Crisco, um, Crisco allows it to absorb the color without yep. bleeding and fading. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Cookies by Design is famous for the cookie bouquet. Right. And there is a patented cookie drill. For the cookie bouquet. What? <laughs> there it yeah. is. Yeah. There's what? There's a patented cookie drill Those to aren't... get the little sticks on. And the thing is, because Tony showed me, you can pluck it right off the stick. They're not baked onto the sticks. Nice. It's not a corn dog. Yeah. <laughs> Although oh we'll do God. a corn dog cookie if you want us <laughs> we to. We do do a corn cookie? dog cookie. Hey, do you I, do one? Lydia, yeah. can I see yes. that cookie? <laughs> You don't have to give me the stick. I'm going to. Because you want to do. Like you want because it. you want to do. <laughs> He's always wanting to stick no, this one. No, it's so impressive. The workmanship is so impressive. Now pull that stick out uh, of there. That is. Um, I've heard that before. Hello. <laughs> I know. I'm a softball setup guy. So no. we, have, um, we have two senior artists um, who work at Cookies by Design. They have been on our team each for 15 years. Oh, my God. They are uh, frosting artists. Wendy, yes, Wendy artisans. bakes all the magic and they create all the magic. So yeah, I'm cool. the one who comes in the back and says, Oh, I was talking with somebody and they'd like to do something that looks like a shrimp and something that looks like a snowboarder. And they go, Okay. And then oh, they make the magic happen. Please, What's... the delightful tone in your voice, I think, probably belies <laughs> the reality. You come storming through the back door, you're chomping on a cigar. <laughs> All right, you. Frosting dudes, I got a new idea. I had it for somebody. Oh, uh, that's not true. I park that's in the front. True? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, Today, but Tony Town. when I told them I was coming here to visit you all, and they said, oh, tell us about that. So they Did the Foodie Friday cookies yeah, for us? Well, how about this? I said, oh, I want to bring a treat. What should we do? And um, again, I get to be the one, like when we walked into the other room, I love being me. Would you like a wonderful cookie? I mean, I've never had anybody say, No, I no, can't. Go no, away. go away. Why would away. I want You're that? You're horrible. Right? Please leave. So, do you have people that say, Are they gluten free? We do actually have a gluten free product. Oh, they do. But we don't bake it at our shop. <clears throat> okay. We are not a gluten free bakery. 
but we do have a gluten-free item for those people. So you'll farm that out to a gluten-free shop. You've got a relationship with somebody that'll bake those rascals for you, and then you bring them in, and the guys do their Well, you know, because their we're part of a magic. national franchise, yeah. they're, um, oh. we are the only one here in Minnesota. Yep. Uh, the next closest Cookies by Designs would be in the Chicagoland area. All right. But they're um, based in Texas, like around the Dallas area. And there is a gluten-free bakery that will create a sugar cookie product we have probably 600 cutters in our shop. Wow. So the gluten-free product that we get in to decorate comes in only maybe 10 or 12 different shapes. Sure. So you couldn't do like a shrimp gluten-free cookie. Because you probably don't some, have that. Well, well you like have a, have a cutter made. I couldn't. But Barbara Patty, the amazing, uh, talented artist at our shop, would take one of the shapes we have. Make it work. And make you happy. Cool. Because Barbara. that's what they do. Yeah. They're amazing. Magic. Magic. It's yes. Magic. I can see that cigar in the they, side of your mouth right now. <laughs> make, me, make me some damn magic. They did the, you know, they're the ones who came up with the, the Foodie Friday, BT and Lydia. It's amazing. I Isn't that it. fun? It's we'll, super fun. We'll be posting I'm pictures so proud of to that. Work they're with really them. adorable. Yeah. And Ross, you've already, that you slammed that rascal down. Good job. I did. That was my carbs for the day. Thank you. <laughs> that was for, for the week, maybe. For the week. Yeah, I'm not Just working off the tomorrow. muscle. Muscle relaxants? No. That just helps it get into my bloodstream faster. <laughs> just metabolize that bad Sugar. boy. Exactly. That's just really a good cookie. That, seriously. It was. And that, I didn't know this. So t I want to learn a little bit more about the drill, the patented drill. So give us a little insight into that. As long as we're, we, I mean, we put well, off the Foodie Friday Five for right so now because I want to hear about the drill. You can see it. So I'm not really giving away any trade secrets there. But um, That's a nice drill hole there. The, uh, right? Oh oh, it is. What is it like having He's your dad talk setup. like that? The setup. <laughs> Is killing. Always. <laughs> I mean, that's perfectly done. It is. It's like it's isn't it? And it feels really interesting. It's a tight fit, even. And they don't even good. break. It's a they don't drill. even no. break. No. How about that? So, uh, so you, what, what's the deal with the drill? I mean, it, you know, there's got to be a. Well, it's just part of the magic, BT. God, I just I now, mean, I want, right? you know what, now I have to pay a visit to see the drill in action. Do you yes. have, uh, um, you know, when I think about making cutout cookies, sorry, this is just me, um, do you have like. Are they rolling them out themselves, or do you have a roller that rolls them? Okay, we we do use a you, like an industrial right that rolls it out to a particular thickness. Okay, that makes sense because I'm thinking, wow, they're all so perfectly yeah. perfect in right. thickness. You know, so Wendy, on average, especially around a time, <sighs> oh, I'll fix that. You're for a you. pro, Lydia. Um, Did you mess up the bouquet not. lid? Oh my god. You might want to stick with this. This is why I'm not exactly. Uh, Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Just play, into, God, your, I love play into your strong suits, honey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bless your heart. Right. Shine where you're brightest. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that is not here. <laughs> well, anyway, um, on, 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 a, on an average day, we probably do 20 cookie bouquets like that. Um, some people call our gourmet cookies our best kept secret because they're amazing. They're all made from scratch um, in our shop every you day. You got the millionaire. You got the lemon one. The lemon drop. Yeah, yeah. the lemon drop. What what other flavors? What's, what's a millionaire cookie? I've never oh. heard of this. Chunks of Hershey chocolate bars, chocolate chips, oats, and pecans. Oh, that sounds delicious. Is that, is that next? Well, it's a family <laughs> company. They wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to call it the orgasm cookie, Did but they? they couldn't do that. Um, our lemon drop is really popular. It's a sugar cookie made with um, real crushed lemon drop candies in the batter. What? what? Right? That's actually, when, when we get to crush the lemon drops, it's like, who oh wants God. to crush lemon drops today? Cause it's, Yay, me! They've got a, they go in this special bag, and then they're beaten with a rubber hammer. Yeah. Teacher, teacher, mm. right? I want to go. I want right? to beat those lemon try. drops. Yep. And, then the, and then the glaze on the top is like a buttery lemon. Lemony glaze. It's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we do our chewy toffee bit cookie, which is just that. It's kind of um, sweet and salty and Swaybacker, are you going to need a go bag after the show? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just like, no, I've got some and plastic bags. And we do bags. snickerdoodles and M&M and oatmeal raisin, decadent chocolate, peanut butter, uh, white chocolate chip, macadamia nut, and pecan. Trying to look over on that tray, see if I miss red look velvet. Delicious. Yeah, red velvet cookies. Yeah. Wow. Well, you got your, you get, like, I mean, I've made those before. The crinkle ones, or not crinkle. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. Right now, yeah. I've did yeah, them yeah. with um, chocolate chips, white chocolate chips in them for oh, Valentine's that's what Day. We do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the fall, we have this pumpkin cookie that. Yes. Well, pumpkin. Mm -hmm. It's like a. Yeah, that should be you'll an be all right year over. round yeah. flavor. I'll be there. I agree. Anytime as as after cold, September 1st, there's a hit. 
Oh, sure. And then oh, yeah. we'll do them through the end of November. Sure. Yeah, you know, and then no one wants anything to do with pumpkin in December. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm with Ross. I could eat pumpkin, oh, I want all, pumpkin all year round. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But, but I know uh, when you have a limited edition thing, it, it fuels the fire for the desire, yeah. too. So. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. that crazy basic bitch, though. It's like, I want to wear scarves all year round. I want to uh, have pumpkin spice lattes all year mm-hmm, round. I want to have pumpkin pie yeah, all year yeah. round. I want apple pie all year can round. I, hey, I Is know it's July, but yet? can we have mincemeat? Right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm, that sounds good today. That sounds great. Yep, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, let's dig into the foodie fries. Friday five. Yes, before we okay. Foodie Friday five. The Foodie Friday five. We uh, like to ask the same qu- five questions of our oh, foodie you're friends. You're covering up your paper. Uh, of course I okay. am. I'm covering it up. And uh, same same five questions. Uh, pretty general, pretty basic stuff. Lydia is going to start. Cool. But do you guys both have the same questions on yeah. your mm-hmm. sheet? And yeah. is it a race? And will I win? Nope. Oh, no. Okay. No, oh. race, no okay. racing. No all racing right. required. Uh, all right. No, <laughs> no adrenaline needed. Tony, what's the first thing you ever made by yourself in the kitchen that you had to cook? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. How old were you? Uh, I don't know. The boxes were much bigger, um, but probably, I don't know, seven or eight. Was it like Kraft mac and cheese? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Splendid with the still, beautiful orange I mean, Kraft powder. dinner still one of the best things ever made, right? Glows in yes. the dark. That powdered cheese, nothing better. <laughs> I think you glow in the dark under Can a black cheese. <laughs> say cheese I think one that's more how time. that works. <laughs> <laughs> That would definitely Jeez. be my, the, the first thing I ever made. Yes. It's very interesting. Ross, how about you? What's the first thing you ever made by yourself in the kitchen that you had to cook? Um, my grandmother made me make her homemade noodles. Ooh. Simple. What kind of noodles were they? They were just an egg noodle. I mean, they sound very difficult, but it's just um, eggs and, and water and flour mm-hmm. and salt. We did was it like growing homemade? up? My mom called and them thronies. Thronies. She was Bohemian, Czechoslovakian. Oh. And so okay. she'd make this... Thrawny soup every Saturday. Oh sure, and it was that's like very a, interesting. Like a a globby noodle, like a dumpling noodle. Ours were. I don't flat. know. Like Did you roll she, yours out? They were rolled out into big sheets. Of so these were, about, these were homemade uh, noodles. They were these homemade were, noodles, right? What? And they were probably I don't know what fourteen inches, maybe sixteen inches around, and then they had to be um, dried out. And of course, while all that was going on, there was a big old roast beef um, simmering in some. I can still see the pot. Like a tomato-y um, sort no, of thing? No, no, just in, like, water. Okay. She just cooked the <laughs> shit out of it <laughs> until it fell apart. And some onions. Sure. Um, and then that's what she would put with it in the end. Um, it would all get mixed together, and they was it's called homemade noodles, and it was like, I've never had crack, but I imagine that's how delicious <laughs> yeah, crack just... is. Because mm. none of us could stop eating it. Food crack. Yep. Yep. Food crack. Right. Mm. That's funny. So, I, I may have helped, you know, with the... The homemade, what we called thronies. Yes, I mean this is. I'm going to Google that. Right, or as I, you we know, say, I don't, finger bang it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's an actual term, but it, um, as we grew what, up, finger bang. Older, yes, it is. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I had never heard of that term before, and a friend of mine, I had a friend over for Christmas, his little side shoot. Oh, good. And it's a he story. used the word finger bang, yeah, and this I is said, a "Great Christmas story." He goes, um, "Finger bang," and I went, "Is that like Google? Like, what is that?" And he goes, are you serious? And I went, yeah, I've never heard that term before. And so now that's a joke in our house. I like it. I in like our it house, I haven't heard where that either. we have either. cheese. Right, cheese? Yeah. cheese? Cheese. I can't say it the way you say it, and I'm jealous. <laughs> well, you can listen back to the podcast. Yes. I'm going to have to practice. do that. I'm going ha- to find someone that can like do a, it's a, be my notification a video ring. of her just saying cheese to some music. Would you like some cheese? Che- I can't even say it. It's cheese. hilarious. Right. Cheese. Anyways. So there you go. Second question. Well, I got to wrangle you guys. Yes. It, com- it comes to me. <laughs> right. It, okay. Well, it comes to me. Uh, in the foodie world, there's often a little pretense from time to time. We try to demystify the pretension of the foodie world, but we like to put it out there in a showcase position from time to time as well, especially with the Foodie Friday Ooh, Five. Excellent preface. Thank wow. you very much. Thank you very much. Ross Swayback, what's the most pretentious food you crave? Where someone may be looking from the outside in going, well, look at what Swayback ordered. Or look what he's got on his plate. Um, oysters. oysters. Nice. Oysters. Oysters. Good answer. Good answer. Yep. Where's the best place to get oysters, in your opinion? Um, well, I never buy them, so to speak, for at home. Um, but like you go out But when I go oysters? out, it's... This is horrible because I don't even know the name. The Lowry. Yes. The oh, Lowry. Yeah. Yep. They have good oysters there. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Good raw bar. Whatever that means. 
That means a many things in my bar. world. Oh, <laughs> raw bar. Okay. Raw. <laughs> you know, once we hit the explicit content <laughs> checkbox on this show, it, 20 minutes we ago. We didn't hold a chance. 20 minutes ago. It's all good. It's all good. Tony, what's the most pretentious food you crave? Oh, I don't know if it's pretentious, but my husband's an amazing cook. Um, does any remember, anybody remember Pierre's on 50th and Penn? Mm-hmm. So he used to make this. Do you remember that? I do. Yes. They had this delicious duck. Oh, my dad used to always get the duck. Yes. He, he would go there speci- I mean, all the time. Anyway, um, this halibut in a puff pastry Ooh. in a vodka tomato cream sauce. Oh, my And Pierre God. only used to have it um, seasonally when he would bring halibut in. He oftentimes did it with salmon, yep. which I don't care for. Um, so my husband... Bold. Bold opinion. Well, Salmon's usually the first thing that I like. Well, like, I like salmon. I like yeah. salmon. I like sunfish at the cabin. But. Yeah. Um, my dad used to go Alaska to Alaska every year and go salmon fishing. And then he would come home and he would do these salmon feeds for what felt like till he went up to Alaska <laughs> again. again. And I love my dad. My, my, my mom and dad are no longer, but um, my dad was an amazing man. Loved him. Um, God, I just, I, if I never eat salmon again, still to this day, I'm all right with that. Wow, it's all right. But I, I can see where you're coming from. As a good northerner, I do like a flaky white fish mm-hmm. and uh, halibut. Do you ever in a put puff cheese pastry. on top? Of I it? do put some cheese on it. <laughs> I do. It's like a little Wasn't whistle. Pierre's? I always thought Pierre's was such a obscure restaurant because it's it of course you'd think to yourself when you're driving by wow that looks like such an elegant place and it was like a hole in the wall it was this total trashy right but the food was amazing those little and the music i thought it was funny because you're like is there going to be like music and then i go oh pierre needs to go get the ipod (laughs) and he put the ipod up to like the sound system it was so crazy when he came out of the kitchen yes yes it was so wild Um, we love that restaurant, but right. that's yep. I, if that's one of my um, one of my very favorite things to have. I yeah, would usually always choose my husband's cooking over uh, a restaurant. I think I'm going to have to ask Corey mm-hmm. for that yeah. a little technique He's on that with the vo- with the vodka deal and the whole night. It's here. a vodka tomato mm-hmm. cream sauce mm-hmm. that goes over the top, mm. um, and it is a little heavy whipping cream in there. It sounds like probably <sighs> yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lot of love that goes in yeah. there. Let me just tell you, you need that heavy cream because that vodka is going to loosen it all up. So you vodka. Have vodka. Vodka, vodka loosens a lot of things. Yes, up. it does, bro. That's a, cool. It's a fine line, especially inhibitions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tony, which person in your life taught you the most about food? My dad. Your dad did. My dad loved to gourmet cook after he retired, so he was always trying different things, wonderful things. Um, they lived out in Plymouth after they retired, but I have lived in Southwest Minneapolis for a long time. So they'd love to come down here and go. It, they felt like it was so exotic. We're going to the city. <laughs> and um, I live not too far from 50th and France, and forever there was Pearson's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dine a family restaurant oh, yeah. for yep. ever and ever and ever. And uh, <laughs> help yourself to cookies. Hey, Jerry. Um, the great journalist G.R. Anderson just reaching his... his he up, should have up raised he middle was, finger. He was, into the room. Selected he was probably looking for a cookie. Yeah. GR, you want a cookie? He gets nothing. Jerry, you want a cookie? Stop. Oh well. Anyway, he's, my dad would love to uh, look at the did anybody ever remember the Mark Cookies at Pearson's? Go on, ask GR like, if he um, wants a cookie. I will. All right. It could be something like braised short ribs or salmon casserole. Or something like that. You know? <laughs> so he would start coming to go to those things, but then branched out to all the other fine restaurants and then took a real love in food and, and just loved to figure out different things to do. When, That's you're, cool. when you're cooking in the kitchen, it, are, does your dad, is, does his is voice pop in your head? You know, or like, I, are there little tricks where it's like, oh, dad told me to use a fork if I'm going to be doing this? Or Our, our friends host this uh, turkey party every year. We've done it for years and years and years. And the first time I ever had to host it, I called my dad, and I said, Dad, you know, because he always did the birds for all family occasions. So I called him. I'm like, Dad, I'm going to make a turkey and, like, 20 pounds of mashed potatoes. And he's like, well, first you're going to want to go in, and that, you know what, what time's your party, and I'll just drop it off. So he literally, <laughs> I mean, he started to try to tell me where I was supposed to go, what I was supposed to get, how I was supposed to prep it, I and all these what, different where? things. And then he just... Became exhausted with it all, and my dad literally showed up with a giant roaster about this big, the bird all beautiful, perfect on the outside, 
Dad. I carved it up like a champ and took all the credit. The credit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good girl. You know, Good girl. Fist and, bumps, baby. And his amazing mashed potatoes right. as well. But actually, my, my, a few people helped him unload it from the car, so they knew it wasn't mine. Now, now you mentioned <laughs> that Dad got into the gourmet thing after he retired, but it sounds like he was a cook throughout your childhood, too. Not to maybe the exclusion of Mom, or did he do more of the cooking than Mom? He did, he did anything on a grill. Okay. He did um, anything with fish, anything with wild game. Anything he with, used as to you said, to, too much salmon. Yeah. <laughs> so he would, um, when we were growing up, I had three older sisters, and my dad and mom loved to entertain. So we would always have this wild game feed. The night before Thanksgiving, the man made a good bird. But he would bring in, you know, back in the day, before you really could get online and find stuff everywhere. And, um, you know, we grew up, for the most part, in Moorhead, Minnesota. So it wasn't like there was a ton of exotic butchers or yeah, things like not, that. There's not a stuff. Kowalski's or a Lunds and Byerly's or a Jerry's. <laughs> more like this Moorhead. heirloom tomato looks really funky. Let's and we didn't it. have those then. <laughs> right. um, those are hybrids. Uh, no, we did have Hornbachers and they did a good job, but um, he would find in these magazines all this crazy stuff. You know, he'd order buffalo and elk and pickled quail eggs and all different kinds of... Cool. Wild game. He had a James Bond thing going on. He could. That man could cook a pheasant in a thousand different ways um, that were all pretty delicious and kind of famous for our, our the folks we know. So he was into the cooking thing. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I asked when you were a kid, and then thereafter too. Yeah. No, he wasn't great. the guy that you know. I'll get home and put dinner on the table. Right. It was the special My dad stuff. liked to entertain. Cook. Yeah. He yeah. made him so, an experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He loved is, it. Is there an epitomized dad recipe that you're like? This is so my dad. Is it the salmon casserole? or No, no. He liked that on the marquee at when we would go over to Pearson's. Um, I'm like, oh, really, Dad? <laughs> We're going to, okay. Pearson's? More, okay. more um, salmon. Although they had an excellent heavenly white cake. Um, so he made this pheasant pot pie that he was okay. pretty known for. Great crust and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah mm-hmm. You know, just um, all kinds of goodness inside of it. Um, he'd do another thing with pheasant. Uh Things he couldn't get anywhere else. He became friends with his local meat man over at Lunds in, in Plymouth and just couldn't wait to order the turducken. Does anybody remember oh, sure. the turducken oh, sure. phase? Yeah, they're, yeah. And they're, they're still out there. They're still out, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's totally still a thing. What a bust. Yeah. I mean, the turducken way overrated. Um, oh, so you didn't like it? Well, it's, it's, that's just silly. I mean, <laughs> I've never had it because it's just like it seems like overkill to me. It is. Yes. It, it literally it's, is overkill. Right. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I'm three like, times I love overkill. Right. It's just it's it was just silly. Um, and he uh, did a lot of fish fries and a lot of salmon. Nice. Yeah. The turducken salmon. thing, by the way, has been taken to new heights as well, where they you know where they've stuffed like other things inside of other things. You know, so oh. inside the duck, there's a quail. Inside the quail, there's a you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's what would you put wrong. inside of a, a, quail, a rainforest? BT. A rainforest bird of some sort? You know, I mean, <laughs> like, I don't know. We have a, a toucan very inside. Very small. It's a tiny just wrong. little thing. It's like right. some IKEA mm. experiment. You know, or the something. duck didn't really taste too good, but the sparrow inside right. was just. Mm, <laughs> I've never had sparrow quite this good before. Mm. 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 Yeah, mm. Huh. he had Dad, a good sense was, of adventure. Dad sounds like was. a fascinating character. He was. Yeah. He was amazing. What was the weirdest thing he ever made with salmon? I mean, salmon casserole sounds disgusting to me. I don't eat uh, salmon. So so back in the day when they were younger and they would entertain and have friends over that would maybe stay later, my mom would do eggs sometime after the poker party got over. Sure. A little bit later. Sure. Or earlier, if you will. Right. A little pre-hangover food. I will. Mm -hmm. I will. Um, Salmon and scrambled eggs. Ugh. Like mixed together, not like Yuck. salmon That's and good. scrambled eggs. That's good. Mm-hmm. And then my mom would that put other stuff. That sounds good to you, There's a salmon scramble at the Longfellow Grill that has like chives and salmon mm-hmm. and cream mm-hmm. cheese, and it's too die. Oh, my I, mom would put I cottage so cheese good. in it. Oh, well, that, that sounds that good sounds to me. Good. That's the Moorhead cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. It looks weird. From the cask cream. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Up in Kiss. Oh, oh wow. Up in Kiss. You've got that accent down. <laughs> Should we move along? Yeah. Should we move along? That's crazy. <laughs> Ross, which person in your life taught you the most about food? My grandmother. She taught me everything. So, Is there an epitomized grandma recipe for you? Um, well, probably her homemade noodles. Okay. Um, that was something. There's a recipe that I still, um, cause when she passed, um, 
my mom's this weird person and took her recipe box. And so um, I've been trying to find um, and even maybe even locate. She made these honey cookies <sighs> when we were growing up, but they were soft. Hmm. And um, kind of like a pumpkin cookie with like mm-hmm. comb. Was it honey comb? Pumpkin cookies with with salted pumpkin seeds on top. Of oh, it. I like that. Oh, okay. Hey Ross, paint okay. a picture for us before you continue about Grandma. So where was Grandma's home? Was it in oh, the city well, on a farm? Up, no, 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 or no, no. no. I, I mean, grew up, just well, I grew up in a small town, La Center. Yeah, and okay. So I had forty people in my graduating classes. Yep. Very tiny back then. And Grandma was in La Center as well. But grandma yeah. was in La Center. I could yep. ride my bike. She's probably eight blocks away. Love it. And I spent tons of time with her because I was kind of a black sheep and she fascinated me with everything she could do. She just like made shit. Right. And planted shit and then would cook it and crochet (laughs) stuff. And I was was like, how do you do that? Right. And she never looked at anything. And like her chocolate chip cookies, she would make the cookie, but then she would put three evenly spaced chocolate chips on there. Bless her. But she grew up very poor. Yeah. So chocolate chips were a luxury. Yeah. And um, anyway, so her honey cookies and then, um, yeah, and, and her homemade noodles. Like, those were the bomb. She would make wash day stew, too, which, but I know how to make that. What's wash day stew? Yeah, I'm very just, I don't know how to make yeah. that. It's just, like you know. Like wiener water soup? It's, oh, my God, I just heard about that, like, two weeks ago. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Um, have you ever seen a recipe for that, where they just throw the wieners out at the end because you don't need them anymore? <laughs> right. <laughs> Story There's a Facebook page life. for it. If you like didn't know the that, fine float, the toothpick in the water. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, those <laughs> poor recipes that my dad used to do. So, um, no, it was just hamburger because hamburger was. She could always stretch that out. Yep. Sure. Meals were all about how you know cook now, eat for five days, <laughs> and um, and that's the way she would cook. And it was always in those these big like blue the blue speckled things that the she roasters. would cook in yeah, yeah exactly yeah, the enamelized roaster yeah. so yeah. It was, and it was just throwing stuff in potatoes and corn and green beans and all these things from her garden was it just grandma living by herself yeah my dad my grandpa died when my dad I think was maybe 10 or okay. 11 so I never knew him no but so it is she's very resourceful and that's you know she's the inspiration for everything that I do like everything that I do everything that people know me for it's all because those were things she taught me how to do. Now, did she teach you oh, how to cool. make soap too? No, I learned that on YouTube. But that, but that, <laughs> but that, <laughs> but that sounds like something That's grandma would have done. Huh? That sounds like something grandma would have done. That's sort right. of a. My you know, grandma was the master of the milk poultice. <clears throat> So oh. or the onion poultice, sure. things like that, yeah. But I, which I never subscribed to that. I don't. I don't know. Does anybody use poultices here in this room? Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. but my. But I you know, know what, what you're I'm talking, talking about. I do. Exactly. I'm like, I do. no, Grandma. I'm a tincture person myself. I don't know what that is. I like unguents. <laughs> you would. You look like an unguent. I just like to say it. I know you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? It doesn't Any, matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't We're matter. just doing contact skin oh, stuff sure. at this point. That's Did your fine. grandma do milk soup? What? No, I've never heard of that. Oh. No, but she had fruit soup, which I loved, which was always always what? at Christmas. You've heard of fruit soup? No. no. What is fruit soup? You guys. Be- oh my god! Is it punch? Is What's it- the broth? No, or- no. Or it soup? was like um, it was, and I don't even know. I think the the technical like the broth was maybe like apple juice. I can um, see that. And then um, you put in like prunes and apricots and cinnamon sticks and um, raisins and all these kinds of things. And she put something else in there because then it almost became a stew-like And were they already dry when she put this? So there was dried fruit going into this? It was dried this? fruit and going so in. And so they'd rehydrate and, and rehydrate. soak some of that? Exactly, yep. right. And she'd cut up the prunes because obviously prunes would get really big. Um, so and, did, it, did it have any meat in it? Was it no, no, savory no, 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 no. It was all just sweet, and that was kind of that was a treat on Christmas. And warm. You know, that sounds was really fruit soup. Yeah, you would that eat sounds it warm. delicious, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, not hot, delicious. not hot, just what warm. What nationality? Well, was she? I mean, you, she would. It would no, be I, hot when she brought it over. No, no, but, but I can just see the right, flavors coming yep. out. Just oh a little my god, more, it's just, delicious. Just at that warm that? sort of temp. What nationality was she? She was German. Okay. Yep. I haven't heard of that one. So, and she would make it. You could probably look it on Pinterest. Like it's not an uncommon thing. But if like that you, makes any sense. Horrible. Like you said, Ross, she she would make that, and she would just make it. Did I sound like a bitch when I said that? <laughs> I get accused of that all you the time. You could probably just find it on Pinterest. It's hey, probably uh, there. Tony, exactly. Hey, Tony. I get that all the time. If you just want to learn how, yes. about, how to make soap. Like such a bitch. If you want, if you want to learn YouTube how to make soap, Pinterest. you'll find that on YouTube. Right. Yeah. yeah. Figure just it find out. it on YouTube. You know. Right. 
They got everything, all the soap you'd ever want to make. Seriously. You too. It's delicious and it's easy. Uh, grandma like would me. make the noodles. She wouldn't look at a recipe. She'd just make the, she'd just do it. Reach it was in, all the you know, touch. Boom, boom, it was boom, all boom. The touch. Yep, exactly. She and and, that's and like the when smell. I, mm-hmm. mm, not necessarily the smell. It was, and, and that's what, when I teach classes like that to the people, it's about the feel, it's about listening and, and looking. I never went according. I don't ever what are you go according to, when to you smell. Cook? Yeah. Um, I'm listening, especially when I'm when I'm going to be like frying something. Um, I listen to what it sounds like when I put it in the pan because then I know if the pan is hot enough. If mm-hmm. it's too, you know, if it's too hot, then I know to lower it or to bring it up, and then I continue to listen to it cook. Um, so that way I know, you know, if it's, you know, how long I need to cook it for, well, fry not, it for, like steaks and burgers, especially for sure. But even deep frying too, you listen for that burble. Yeah, you know, oh, of you the, totally of the oil. To. Exactly. Yep. yep. And you're not reliant upon words. We're, we're teaching Someone you else's something, words. Tony. <laughs> I came to learn. I right? said that before. And you so. have been. Yeah, I got it. Mm-hmm. Number four. Number She's four. Girl going it's going to be Friday number four. Check it. Tony, the smell of this food makes you feel the hungriest. Just the smell. Ugh. I'm going to answer Soup. that first. It's Funyuns. <laughs> oh, my. Nice. God, my son loves the Funyun. We call it the Funyun at the our Funyun. house. Mm. Soup. Um, the Funyun. Soup. Soup is. Soup. My mom's Thrani Soup. Thrani soup. Thrani soup. I love that name, that word, Thrani. It became as we, it, so she would make this big kettle of it every Saturday. And as we got older, my friends would always come over every Saturday because they knew my mom had this big kettle of soup on. She liked, you'll appreciate this probably from your grandmother. She liked to start with an old hen, right? Had to be an old hen that she boiled. I could see my grandmother saying right? something like that. <laughs> oh, it's got, you know, I'll pick up the chicken. No, it's got to be an old hen. It's got to be an old one. <laughs> Sent your dad to the store for an old hen. I thought, well, he's got <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Too loud. I don't mean that. Um, Love you, mom. But she exactly. So she would, you know, boil us down all day long, and then we'd, you know, I'd sometimes help her make the thronies, and you'd roll them out. You'd the noodles. Them, mm-hmm. Yeah, but right. but hers were chunky. Were they like gnocchi or um, like not? Um, yes and no. Okay. Not that sticky and like doughy. a schnitzel, maybe more like okay. that. Okay. Yep. So as you roll them out, and she would oftentimes use a grater. So some of them would oh. come out bigger than others. Gotcha. We called they were they were affectionately known as the turds. <laughs> um, so it would be like the big, long, chunky ones, and all the rest were you know pretty small, tiny almost little, like a spatula. Tiny tiny little turds, rabbit, yeah, rabbit, tiny rabbit little pellets. turds. Mm-hmm. But as and carrots and celery and all of that in the soup. And so when it was ready. The people who got there first got the big turds. That was a big deal. <laughs> there was always there was always one thing of crackers and butter in the middle of the table, and then you'd just help yourself just and go. go around. That yeah. sounds lovely. Mm, and the smell of that is um, it, um, still to this day. Um, would, you, would you put the turds in the bowl and then put the broth on top? No, you or? have to cook them in there so they okay, get nice yep, and soft. Good. I just, yeah, just but, check it because I don't the, know how, how you're going to get the big turds, turds over the little turds. But the deal turds. with the big turd is that sometimes when you got to the middle of it, it was almost a little bit dry. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Because it, of it being such a hard flour right. noodle right, right, right. or flour dumpling. Right. A little chewy action going on on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you yep. still make this soup today? You know, I do try. So um, never as good as my mom and dad did it. Um, they also made a beef like a short rib soup with the same recipe and that instead. Uh, my maiden name was Daly, and my parents loved to cook, so I wanted to make this while they were alive. Um, our Daily Bread mm. cookbook. Catchy, nice. Huh? Right? God. And neither one of them could come up with a recipe for anything. You couldn't come up with a recipe. Because they just cooked it. Yeah, they just, they just made it. We're like, oh, can I get the recipe? Well, you know, it's a little of this, a little of that. That's I'm not like, concrete. I tried Mom. that. <laughs> it doesn't work. So, so we never got the cookbook off the ground. But my <laughs> um, my I, I do have a nephew who, who thinks he's gotten it written down, and then one of my nieces printed it up and gave one to all the grandkids this nice. year. So, excellent, Ross. You said that funyuns. <laughs> the smell of funyuns made you feel the hungriest, and you had an answer right away. Yeah, where that's my jam. That's funyuns your jam. Are my jam to this day. To this day, Funyuns. Funyuns, ride or die for Everybody life. knows. Well, everybody knows that I, it's my kryptonite. <laughs> it's my kryptonite. This may lead into Ross's answer for question number so, five. It very may it's well. totally, yeah. I mean, and whenever I don't allow myself to buy them, unless we're going, like, we're going to go up to the, um, we've got a family cabin up in Nisswa, so that's the thing. There's a bag of Funyuns, like a ration. Every day we get one bag. <laughs> 
You and say we, but do you really mean you get one? No, bag? well, I try to share. Do you, stop at the, share. you stop at the Schroeder's right but, there? Is that where uh, you get your Funyuns? Well, yes, yes. We you don't hand the bag, you hand exactly. a Funyun, don't you? So, when what's you that? share, When you share, you don't hand the bag, you hand I, a Funyun, right? I pour them into a bowl. <laughs> oh, and okay. I, put them into, I literally have to push them into the center of the table and go, here we go. And then I just go with it. So, yeah. Funyun ration. Yeah, I love Funyuns. You've gone beyond your ration. Me. That was the funniest thing. Like, I got this weird tweet about a month ago from Funyuns. From Funyuns? <laughs> and I was like, what? And then they were like, yeah, well, we heard you like Funyuns because I've talked about it on the show before. <laughs> So then um, they're like, would you be interested? Because we're going to be coming out with some new flavors this year. Would you be interested yes. in trying them? And I was like, Bob no. Bad, of course. <laughs> um. I didn't say that. Sincerely. I'm like, oh, yes. Very much so. Fun. Sincerely, yeah. Robert Q. Funyun. Exactly. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> no, it's not a made-up so, name. Uh, but, that's my name. Right. So question number five is, what is your guilty pleasure food? Is it Funyuns or is there another? Well, they're not with us anymore. Okay. At least I can't see them anywhere, but banana flips. Oh, oh. my. I, wasn't, was that a hostess one or was that an off? Uh, not, not no, a it was hostess. the real one. The real one. I couldn't control myself with those things. <laughs> was it the, it was the spongy, spongy cake? cake you know, with, but it had a banana flavor it to it. It was that fake that banana, banana, banana flavor. flavor. Frosting yep, yep. That was inside of it. It was and a it was filling. Just, Oh, well, whatever. It wasn't a frosting. Yeah. But it was right. a frosting. It was like Filling. a Crisco frosting <laughs> mm-hmm. that was in there. Yeah. I, I have had a flip What you want? You need to be yeah. in branding because you're all about changing things up. <laughs> <laughs> or work in PR. I'm, I'm just telling you're you what it was called. It was called control. a filling. It wasn't called an, an icing. It's called so, a filling. I yeah, do remember I, that cloying um, ban- imitation banana flavor. Oh, yeah. Just, and it was just the mm, cake was greasy. Oh, yeah. Greasy. Yeah, it was just like full of oil. Like if you set it on a napkin or a paper oh, plate, God, it, would, yes, exactly. it would leave it would it would a treasure. It was a treasure map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, a greasy but, treasure map. A banana like a shape. Line. Yeah, that half yeah. It was just a half shape. moon. Mm-hmm. And there supposedly is a bakery up north, if you're listening. That does um, a moon pie that, like that? No, that makes them from scratch. And I've tried, but I can't find a banana flavoring. That translates, okay, um, to the you know, and into, the real banana the, thing isn't going to work. As you want to call it a filling, because <laughs> um, I can make the cake air quotes. And filling. I tried making, and I mean, the cake is just a plain yellow cake, so that's super super easy. Uh, you know, in my bitchiest Allegedly. tone, of course. <laughs> just go on Pinterest, you'll find it. <laughs> um, but the filling was the hard part, and it, again, it's really just that Crisco frosting. But it's that banana. I cannot find a banana. I'll bet flavoring. you it has marshmallow. Fluff Ooh. in it. Well, then that's a whoopie pie filling. No, but I mean to me, mixed in with well, that and you Crisco. could, but still, it's mm-hmm. the banana. It's that banana um, flavor you're looking so, for. So, but yeah. but take that away from it. Anything gummy, like oh. anything worms. gummy, worms, fish, bears, mm. fruit. Oh, those fruit slices. Yeah. Mm. Oh my oh god. My god. Covered in sugar. Covered in sugar. Oh my mom. Like loves you get those. at Candyland. Oh, oh, those are the best. Yeah, they come in those crunchy in. cellophane bags. Right. Yeah. They oh, have and the, Candyland have there. The crimp top Chicago on. mixed popcorn. Well, well, here's here's the usual order to bring home for Mrs. Turner, the lovely Mrs. Turner. A, qu- a quarter bag Chicago mix, and then uh, three quarters of a pound of Swedish fish gummy. Oh my god! Gummy. Oh. oh my god! I love you. I do. Gummy. Did you know Swedish that fish. they just that they just won like I think it was a year ago a lawsuit that they are the only ones that can use the term Chicago mix. No, I didn't know that. They the developed Candyland? that word. Who's love that? It. Candyland. Candyland. The Candyland. Oh. You got yep. the one in, uh, in downtown St. Paul, yep. and you yep. got the one in downtown Minneapolis, and yeah. Stillwater, and Stillwater. Thank you. Yep, and Stillwater. That's yeah. So, huh. oh, there. Have you never had their Chicago mix popcorn? Oh, for sure I've had Oh, because I'm like that. <laughs> Again, it's I have never had crack. I have. A, <laughs> but I, it must be t- it must be just like that. I shit you not. I have a piece of Candyland toffee in my lunch bag downstairs wow. right now. Oh, right yeah. now. That's, I do like toffee. Mm-hmm. That's some brand loyalty right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I and I thought since the explicit was checked off, I'd say I'd shit you not. <laughs> which I'm not. I'm not shitting you on this thing. Mm-hmm. Tony, what is your guilty pleasure food? Chips. Anything what one specifically? chippy, crunchy. crunchy. Crunchy, crunchy, salty. Does that include yes. like the, the Dorito or the uh, Cheetos, like the tiger guy that they've got? Um, no, yeah, like puffy crunchy? Cheetos, yeah. regular right. Cheetos, Doritos, Tostitos. Um, does that include kale chips? And no, sir, chips? it does not. Because <laughs> <laughs> those are gluten free. Yeah, that's not a real chip. That's, um, not a chip. that's a vegetable. Have you had those? Because they're like eating crepe paper. <laughs> they're not good. I had a coworker bring some in. They're like, I brought kale chips. I they made them. It's like, oh man, that's so nice. Like, try them. Eat them. Eat them. Eat them. 
And so you probably I burned some calories because it took did. you four hours to make them, and they're right. right? Oh my god, it totally it's does. Like, and there's like, like it's too it's much like, work, yeah. and it's like celery. It takes you more energy to eat it than right. the caloric <laughs> value of the it, food. Right. Yeah, I right. think that's one of those things that comes down to portion control. It just takes you so long to make so few, mm-hmm. yeah. right? It's mm-hmm. not like the gratification of. Like, when you open a bag of Funyuns, you know about how many are in there, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what the hell you're jumping into. You know into. about how yeah. full you're going to be afterwards, mm-hmm. and not very. Not uh, very. Not very. No. Uh, last Bosses Week, uh, my uh, team was kind enough to um, get me a gift. It was a giant bag about this big filled with every kind of snack chip they could find. Wow. Nice. Because that is my, I it's love a snack jam. chip. There you go. Your chippy chip thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a Frito, a, a Crunchy Lay's. Sun I, chips are good for you. I, At least I, that's what I tell myself. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I do like the sun right. chips. Especially the, the harvest cheese. sun in them. Harvest right. so that the means cheese. Good for <laughs> well, I'm, getting, I'm getting a dose of uh, vegetable in every Funyun. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, come They're on. They're made out of onions, aren't, aren't they? Aren't they? Powdered. Right. Ones. Sure, what's, they are. What's your guilty pleasure food? Oh, I need to think on that. Really? You're gonna have to dwell on that a little yeah. bit. What's mm. yours? Swedish fish and Chicago mix. Hagen dazs baby. Oh, oh yeah. I was thinking gelato. Immediately, that's what I thought was that the Talenti gelato. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, either the salted, the sea salt caramel one, or there's like a cookie crunch. Oh, magnificent yeah. thing, and I can't stop myself <laughs> from eating. I don't know the name, but I it's don't know. It has cookie in it. And you just point and grunt when you uh, go. Just, I'll have that. Right. I go with my roommate in Delunds, and it's like, what should we get? I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what should we get? Let's shop for a while know. before I get this again. I'll just have half of it. I'll just have like the first little layer to the Talenti label, and then I'll be done. <laughs> You know, the I'll other, know you first. The no, no, no. Reason, I got it for you. The only reason haagen is my guilty thing is because you can get it when it's guilty time. And like you're oh driving God. home and it's like guilty pleasure food. Otherwise, I, ha- I would have to answer Sebastian Joe specifically. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, that for me, you know, if, but, but I, you know, I, I'm not going to drive from home to Joe's, you know, be, do, to be guilty. Byerly's is much closer, so I can right. get my haagen guilty pleasure fix. I, I'm an equal opportunist guilter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. So uh, uh, have you thought of another one? I mean, did, was the Talenti one? Is that, is I that, think I'm sticking with Talenti. There yep. you go. Yep. There you go. Love there you it. go. I like gelato. Uh, Ross, what's going on with the world of, of lessons and, and cooking and you know, getting out and, and teaching people how to cook? Are you doing that on a regular basis? Well, Are I've you getting a, out there much? I've got a class coming up with Kitchen Window. I didn't get um, – I'm a procrastinator. Um, so I didn't get in on the next schedule. So, But I've got a class coming up. I think it's in August. Okay. Um, for to make all of the appetizers that we make up at the cabin. Nice. Um, all those kind of stupid white trash things that we always eat. <laughs> we'll so, talk later. I have a yeah. few for you. I just love anything <laughs> white trash. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. And I still do experiential um, cooking classes with, you know, for the Mall of America and for tourism groups that come into town. So I've got some riverboat cruises that are coming Um in two weeks so that should be interesting and fun i don't do enough of the classes like i really enjoy that so then when i do them it's kind of weird because i feel like i'm starting all over again when i used to do them every week you get into this mode and it really becomes because because to me a cooking class is an experience it's like you're coming to the circus yeah in itself and so there's this hey you're the ringmaster and you're doing all this stuff it's really not about the food i mean people want to eat but people want to be entertained more than anything absolutely and so i always feel like i have to kind of get back into like now what did i used to do um type of a thing kind of finding my pitch right exactly right showman groove so but i love teaching classes it's just a blast especially when there's alcohol involved <laughs> is so, there most of the time most of the time but see That's kitchen nice. window which well, you know is the one thing like kitchen window you can only Bring they'll only own. serve wine wine yeah and so the last class that i did was a brazilian barbecue and i was hoping that we could make these pineapple batitas um but we couldn't so unfortunately it wasn't as fun as it could so have sadly been, i had to sneak all that in right well it was in the pie <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, do you so do the uh, green egg the stuff the what the do you do any of the green egg stuff Oh, you know what? Well, I don't do the green egg stuff because I'm just going to be blunt. I have yet to get green egg to give me something. Oh. Mm, They need to get on that. I want to be comped. They need to get on that. (laughs) My husband was one of the first uh, big green egg (laughs) owners in our area. But he got it at Sedegrin's. Oh, sure. So, 
No, I saw them. I go to Gertens all the time. We're throwing out all these um, brands and names. Um, and I see their huge display, and it sal- I salivate over that. I've got a big one. I'm, I you heard. Got a big one? My husband's working on building his big kitchen yeah. around his big an, one. I got it's on egg. Tinder. I got an XL big green egg. <laughs> Woo! Mm-hmm. And I'm a happy mm-hmm. owner. I yeah. love that thing. So what's the, what's the thing that you cook on your big green egg that you love the most, that people go, wow? Slow pork shoulder. Ten-hour oh. pork shoulder. Cold pork sandwiches. Yum. Mm-hmm. We just did those. I do the, the marinade and uh, and get an overnight marinade going on those bad. Mm-hmm. I cook two at a time, so I cook about twenty pounds worth at a time. You should and have then, my husband in here. And then uh, <laughs> and then I and then I I've got a vacuum sealer, the yeah. food saver, yeah. which oh, I sure, love. Sure, 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 sure. One of the best tools in the kitchen, because I like to cook like grandma in bulk. Right. And so I'll make twenty pounds of pulled pork sandwich, and then we'll eat a bunch, and then we'll eat a bunch the next day for lunch, and then there's still. 12 pounds left, you know, 13 pounds left. And that stuff freezes great. It and does, I, and yep. I do it in two pound freezer bags, you, you know, yep. freezer of uh, yep. uh, 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 amounts. Right. And so that you, you can pull two pounds out, and that's enough for, you know, like a meal and some, some change. So sure. just love it. Yeah. We're not yeah, too far it. from the Mercado over here. Do you ever go in there? I do. Yeah. And get their giant stack <clears throat> of tortillas mm-hmm. for like a dollar? Absolutely. They've and got some delicious foods in there and the fresh the, the fresh tortillas are awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. So you do that pork and you do your po- pulled pork tacos? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Well, you know, and there's Different also... ways to go with we're, your... We're working on this now because, you know, we got the whole granite counter and all that stuff to make yep. breads and, and tortillas and stuff. So we got the tortilla press going at home now. Oh. So that's, you know, get the freshy fresh going on. You know where I learned about that? On Pinterest... <laughs> Ross. It's there. I know it's there. Ross, on, enlight, enlighten or, or me a little on, bit, or maybe on YouTube. I might don't know. A, might One of the two. YouTube. Enlighten me a little bit where food came into your personal professional narrative. You said that your grandma kind of taught you all of these things that you're doing right now, but has it always been kind of top of mind where it's like I'm going to do something with food? Yeah, I mean, forever it's been food. Cooking and entertaining and all that has really just been because of my grandmother. It's always been a part of um, my life. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't until the economy went south and BT probably, I think you know my story. Um, you know, I used to own a mortgage company. And then when the economy went south, I was like, what am I going to do? Right. And so I was trying to find a job in the real world because I'd always worked for myself. And a friend of mine told me, you should start a blog. And I said, what the fuck is a blog? Right. That's literally what I said. That's how we met because I was a, a subscriber to your yep. blog and I loved all, you know, I did right. something in every week or whatever it was. Right, right. I, I used to like, send out an email stuff, when people you know? were reading them. Yeah. And um, so I did. I started this blog and did this newsletter and um, it just kind of became something I never expected it to. So, and then now you just kind of look back and go, oh my God, I mean, it's. It's just crazy. So, and I now I get to, you know, I cook on fire. Well, you don't know that. I just always say that. That's where the bitch in me comes out because I'm like, oh, yeah. well, you know. <laughs> well, you know. Well, obviously. Google me. Or you probably already Google know this. Me. But I get lectured about that by people that say, stop saying you probably already know this because it makes the people that don't feel stupid, which is what I want to do. <laughs> catch up. Catch but up. Exactly. Exactly. Catch up. Catch up. I love that phrase. I'm going to use that. <laughs> But, um, no, you know, it's so funny because I say that because I feel like I'm saying something that everybody does know and that I'm just being stupid, assuming that someone there doesn't know it. Does that, does that make any sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. So I just have to stop saying it. But, um, so, but right. I'm the lifestyle expert for Fox Mm -hmm. and where (laughs) they let me do whatever I want to do, um, which is crazy. Um, especially because it's Fox yeah. Um, but Fox here is amazing. Um, they're yeah. so gay friendly. They really, I wouldn't necessarily say they embrace me. <laughs> um, you know, but they hug like, you. Oh, but, right. But, yeah, but, there's him. But they air hug you. Um, you know what? I, I feel so supported by them. Um, and I never expected, you know, when they called me to, um, you know, to have that kind of an opportunity. I used to be on WGN out of Chicago um, and did that for like a year and a half. But again, you don't get paid to do stuff like that. Like a lot of people don't realize when you're on television, you're not getting paid. And so, um, but it was, so it was kind of great to be in a position where I'm not having to drive six hours one way. Yeah. (laughs) Um, The, and the audience size is actually fairly similar, um, you know, now between, um, and I've worked really hard for this, so, you know, I mean, I'll toot my own and do a little humble breaking myself. I mean, we're the number one show. Toot, We've toot. got roughly about 400,000 people who watch us. We literally are number one day in and day out. Yep. 
And um, I'm the number one contributor on that show, so that makes me super happy that people get my crazy. And it pushes your brand out and there. And it pushes my way. brand, yeah. right. And um, and all my stuff consistently gets shared on our social media. I fought very hard for that. And so, you know, there's another, you know, four to 500,000 people. So every week, you know, I'm getting viewed by like a million people. And that, to me, is huge. It is huge. So when you're trying to build a brand and whatever it is that I'm doing, um, you know, and then I kind of get to do, you know, outside of getting talked to every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I get to do what I want and share what I really am passionate about. And that's what I think maybe um, makes people, um, in, I don't want to say engage, but connect with me, so to speak. Sure. Like, I love getting stopped in public by people who consider me a friend and I don't even know who they are, you know. But it's because... I, you know, what I do resonates with them and I'm the black sheep. And so I'm all, you know, I'm kind of like if you merged Martha and pink together, (laughs) I'm like, fuck you. Here's a pie. Are there acrobatics in the show? Uh, Yes. There's there's silks. Right. But I'm wearing spandex usually in those. (laughs) And, um, but you know, and that's what I love about it because my, I've never wanted to put, you know, having that opportunity to be on television is great. But I've always been of the belief that if it were to ever become something, I wanted to be me, truly me, yep. the entire time. And um, instead of, you know, being some hack, so to speak. Um, or somebody's I'm, creating a character right. and they're or, not themselves. And it is somewhat of a character, you know. Sure. I mean, you're in media, you get that. There's always a character, you know, or caricature um, kind of a person a person that goes with it. But ultimately, you know, what you see about me, and frankly, really everybody on the show, almost everybody, I'll throw that shade out there, um, <laughs> that's on the show, um, is uh, is who they are. And that's what I really love about it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I talk, it's so funny that I can talk about men's underwear, and I can talk about how to make cookies, and I can show people, you know, how to make a mosquito garden to make mosquitoes go away from your, you know, and then the next day I can talk about, you know, I don't know, Just the like, Pantone color of the year and how yeah, to decorate yeah. with it. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's like all over the board. Nobody can kind of pin me down. And I do think, too, another reason people have watched me is because they're always wondering what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> There's that <laughs> little bit of what is he going to say? Are they going to and check I like the that. explicit box for right, exactly. this episode? <laughs> exactly. Are they? I have oh, been wait. talked to. Oh. This is a live right. thing. <laughs> wait. Right. Oh. We can't give a warning out there. Right. So what dictates what you choose to have on your contributions to the show? Or I do. You do? I do. Nice. So what? Yeah, I mean, I cook is, on Fridays. That's just kind of always... Um, I started out on Wednesdays, and then um, we had so many contributors on Wednesdays that they switched me to Tuesday. Um, and then um, I was always like, I want to cook. Like, I want a dedicated day to cook every single week. So then, and I kept saying, I want Friday. I want to do it on Friday. And I had to harass them for like a year before they were finally like, fine, fine, just do, do it. Do your cooking fine. See, there's my, there's fine. my Minnesota. Fine. 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 As long as they're um, And I could make bars <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> but um, so I dedicate my Fridays to cooking because I think a lot of people on Friday are going, what am I going to make? What do I do? And for the weekend, um, but most of my food is strange too, because again, people want to be entertained. People in my, from my experience, like it's great when chefs come on and they make things, but you know, people want you to see you making cupcakes with spam. You know, people want to see you making, you know, um, dip with vodka in it. You know, it's the weird things. Again, it's an entertainment factor. So on Tuesdays is now when I'll talk either about home, which you're always like, that's really what we want you to talk about. We don't want you talking about men's underwear. Stop, stop. (laughs) Um, But, um, you know, so it's mainly home, um, crafting. I don't craft very much because crafting is time consuming. And as much as I love to craft and I'm a craft whore, um, it's you have four minutes. And that's what, you know, TV. Have you ever been on TV? I have not. It's a, it's a, you, you have to cover everything and make it look effortless and simple and easy in a very compartmentalized space. And right. And know that when that host asks you a question, you answer it and you move right on with what you were saying. And you have to complete it and be calm. You have to do a complete arc. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Bell curve top, story end. Right. Hey, and now try a sample. 
Right, exactly. Here I mean, it is. Here's that velvet Here cake with the right. macadamia. And don't nuts. serve that bitch on a paper plate with a plastic fork <laughs> no, no. because I will call your ass out on that. <laughs> nope. It's so going to be on some nice china. up a sequin calendar in four minutes. No, like I did. I remember the last craft project I did um, were these sugar cone, sugar pine cones. Are you familiar with those? Like you just got to go on Pinterest and you'll see them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're huge. They're the biggest pine cone. Sugar pine trees Eighth are time, the largest trees funny. in the country. They grow to like two to three hundred feet tall. They're only in California. Oh. And the pine cones, seriously, are this is a small one. Oh my god! Big ones are like this big. Like oh my god! Yeah, a you got to fit that one feet. in. Yeah, right. Wow. And so um, what I did is I. Um, I glittered all the edges on the on both sides. I you know That's I tedious. I um, cocktailed these two colored glitters together. I'll glitter anything <laughs> that doesn't move. Is that a euphemism for something? It's a gay thing. <laughs> and then I found this you know these this gorgeous kind of um, vintage gray ribbon and uh, and then I made a bow out of them. So a couple of them nice. hanging down. Cool. It was absolutely gorgeous. But you know to show that to show it, to get the host <laughs> to get the host to glitter it you know and then show. It. Um, but the other cool thing that I did, which I think most people can do, is for Valentine's Day, I um, mixed, sorry, I can talk about anything. Um, <laughs> I thinned out glue, just that regular Alamo glue that you can normally yep. get at, at Joanne, like whatever their Joanne is. Um, so I just thinned it out with water, put it in a spray bottle, and then you spray your roses. Um, you just do it one at a time and then sprinkle glitter over them. Nice. And then you've got glittered roses and they were gorgeous and people loved them. And they get hard and it kind of crusts well, over. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, it's just a real thin film. Oh, so gotcha. the roses I still gotcha. aren't ruined, so to speak. Yeah. And then as they began to die, I just turned them upside down. Everybody can see me doing that. Let them dry out. Let them dry out. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, then you've got something, you know, to kind of remember it by. Mm-hmm. Not that anybody gave me roses. <laughs> but well, Not anyway. that we're bitter at all. Right. You know, before the show takes a dark turn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We have to say so long. We did 60 minutes of oh, wow, Friday been right sorry. here. Hey. We're crying out loud. Look at there. <laughs> oh. Another fabulous Tony show. Tony would not stop fabulous talking. Fabulous guest. God. Don't worry. Next she time can... I don't want her here when I'm here. <laughs> I'm just so impressed with your crafting. I have to do it one last time. Don't worry. She can learn about talking on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's on there if you haven't seen it. Find some great recipes and lifestyle stuff from Ross Wayback right. at his website. Now, right. let me spell the last name. S-V-E-B-A-C-K. RossWayback.com. And order some cookies. Get the yes. bouquet. Get the platter. Get the oh millionaire. Get the lemon drop and more. Yeah. Cookiesbydesign.com. That'll yeah. get you right there. Right. Tony doesn't yeah. make them. She just promotes them. Well. <laughs> she chomps that cigar and makes yeah. it all happen. Tony They're delicious. Ma- Seriously, those I are really good cookies. I a great team. I couldn't you be do. more proud right. to Tony makes that shit happen. Exactly. I do. Exactly. I do. <laughs> that shit happen. <laughs> Thanks well, you thank guys. you for that PG-13 yes. rated, <laughs> perhaps R-rated version of Foodie Friday here on the Alive and Social Network. I'm BT. Oh, I'm That's Lydia. Funny. Tony, good to see you. Thanks for being Thanks here. Thanks for having yes, us. Ross, thank good to you. see you, brother. Thanks thank for being you. here. Sorry, join, I was join, late. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Join us next week on Foodie Friday. Be on time. <laughs>